You had some very strong comments about Donald Trump yesterday. I asked him about specifically the one where you said uh, that you couldn't trust him with the nuclear codes. It's not tough to imagine uh, him bringing the country into war because somebody got under his very thin skin. That's pretty close to a quote. Mm -hmm. And his response was, hey, she's the one that voted to go to war in Iraq. How do you respond to that? Well, I think the speech yesterday was really an attempt to present to the American people everything that he has said, uh, what he has proposed that he would do, which violates Republican and Democratic agreement about how to be strong in the world, how to present ourselves, how to protect our allies and our friends, how to take on our rivals where necessary. And uh, I'm happy to put my record up against uh, his uh, you know, comments, his rants, and his outright lies anytime. But his specific criticism was, why would you accuse me of going to war when you actually brought us into a war that he criticizes as an unnecessary one? Well, he supported it. We have evidence and audio of him supporting it. So I think that's uh, another example of him trying to rewrite history. But I said, look, it was a mistake to uh, vote for that. Uh, but I have a lot more experience as a senator, as secretary of state, uh, that I am more than happy to talk about throughout this campaign. Because when people vote, they are voting for the president, who is our commander in chief. And I have said, and I believe this uh, with all my heart, he is uh, not qualified to be commander in chief, either there, by experience, preparation, or temperament. There have been some. There were some really ugly images uh, on the TV screens yesterday. Some really reprehensible assaults, attacks by anti-Trump protesters against people who support Donald Trump. Do you condemn the violence? What is your message to people who are protesting Donald Trump? I condemn all violence in our political. Uh, arena. I condemned it when Donald Trump was inciting it and congratulating people who were engaging in it. I condemn it by those who are uh, taking violent uh, protests to physical assault uh, against Donald Trump. This has to end. He set a very bad example. He created an environment in which it seemed to be um, acceptable for someone running for president to be inciting violence, to be encouraging his supporters. Now we're seeing people who are against him responding in kind. It should all stop. It is not acceptable. At the end of the day, do you think that those violent anti-Trump protesters actually might be helping him in a, in a way by, by showing his opposition in such a horrendous light? I don't think any of this helps anybody. I don't think his protests uh, that were led by his supporters beating up people who were uh, peacefully protesting against Trump helped Trump. And I don't think that people who are protesting and using uh, physical violence against people supporting Trump are helping anybody. So I wanted to just end, Jake. I don't want to parse it. I don't want to talk about the political implications. I want it to end. The police have a hard enough job trying to make sure that we're able to gather and talk about the issues facing our country. And Trump has lowered the bar. And now, is it a surprise that people who don't like him are stepping over that low bar? I don't think it is. He needs to condemn all violence by everyone. I already have. I will continue to do so. Uh, there was a really disappointing jobs report that came <clears> out. <throat> um, 38,000 jobs, not enough to even remotely keep pace with population growth were created in the month of May. Uh, thousands and thousands of Americans disheartened leaving the job force. What would you as president do to create jobs that President Obama is not currently doing? Well, first of all, let's remember we've had 75 straight months of job creation. And yes, the numbers uh, that have come out this week uh, are disappointing to anybody because we want to keep jobs growing. We want the unemployment rate, which did drop again, to be reflective of a tighter labor market, not people leaving right. uh, because they get discouraged. And that's a big problem. Well, it's a big problem, but I really uh, believe that we've got to do more to create more jobs, to, uh, more, to have more infrastructure jobs, something that I've been advocating for, something that I think should have bipartisan support. How would you which, get it through Congress? Well, that's my point. It should have bipartisan support. We don't have enough jobs in America with rising incomes to provide hardworking Americans with the kind of purpose, dignity, and rising standard of living that we deserve here in our country. 
I think President Obama inherited a terrible situation. I've said that repeatedly over the past year. And we have come a long way out of the ditch we were dropped into by the failed Republican policies. Donald Trump wants to go back to that only in a more exaggerated form that will, I believe, throw us into a recession again, create a lot of economic hardship for people. So let's get Republicans and Democrats to agree. We need to fund more infrastructure jobs. We need to come together to encourage the private sector. That's why I'm supporting a national infrastructure bank to do that, because there's good public-private partnerships. We have so much work. We're a couple trillion dollars behind in maintenance and repair and new infrastructure, roads, bridges, tunnels, ports, airports, water systems, sewer systems. We need to be re imagining and configuring our electric grid. We have great work. We've got clean, renewable energy jobs out there waiting. And this is one of those moments, and we've had them in the past in our country, where the government has to step in and do more to create the environment and the incentives and the funding so we get those jobs. And, and the last thing I would say about this, because obviously it's at the centerpiece of my campaign about how we create more jobs with rising incomes, is that the United States is doing better than anybody in the world. You know, we have to tend to our own business at home in order to keep the economy moving forward and hopefully create more growth and more fairness in our economy. And we have to have somebody who knows how to deal with the rest of the world because problems abroad in Asia and Europe and elsewhere can come back to hurt us economically. So you can't really separate the job of president having good stewardship for the economy with the job of being really the global leader to make sure that we not only enhance peace and prosperity, but that it creates the conditions for us to build our economy here. The Sanders campaign uh, has been mounting a very strong challenge against you here in California. And in fact, it's, it's neck and neck, according to public polling, anybody could win. Eight years ago, when you were behind then Senator Obama, although you were closer than Sanders is with you, uh, you said, if Obama is so inevitable, why is he having such a tough time closing the deal? So let me just put it to you. You are inevitable in your view. You will be the nominee. Why is it a tough landing for you in California and elsewhere? Well, let's see what happens on Tuesday. I'm very proud of the campaign we're running here. And I believe on Tuesday I will have decisively won uh, the popular vote and I will have decisively won uh, the pledge delegate uh, majority. You can't get much more than that out of a primary season. And in fact, the contest between then Senator Obama and myself was much closer. Um, by some standards, I actually led a little bit in the popular vote, but I fell a little short in the pledge delegates. So I had a decision to make. A lot of my supporters said, hey, let's keep going, you know, let's make sure that we go to the convention. I said, no. I ran to become president because I have deep values and beliefs about what should be done in our country. I am much closer in the goals that I think we should be pursuing with Barack Obama than I am with the Republicans. The same is true with Senator Sanders and myself. We both want to raise the minimum wage. We both want to get to universal health care coverage. We both want to make sure Wall Street never wrecks Main Street again. We share so many of the same goals. We have different approaches, different ideas about how best to achieve those. So if you are a supporter of mine or you're a supporter of Senator Sanders mm -hmm. and you look at this contest, which has been largely on issues, although we've had our differences, sure. compared to the Republican side, which has been largely on insults and uh, plans that never would be uh, uh, feasible. It's gotten tough with you and Sanders, though. I mean, not as tough. Well, but, but it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's nothing like what we saw on the Republican side. Yeah. And so after Tuesday, I'm going to do everything I can to reach out to try to uh, unify the Democratic Party. And I expect Senator Sanders to do the same and that we will come together and be prepared to go to the convention uh, in a unified way to make our case to leave the convention to go into the general election to defeat Donald Trump. There's one other thing about Donald Trump I want to ask you, and then I know you have to go, and that is when you were launching your criticism, your attack against Trump University, which is right now in the middle of a civil suit for fraud, um, the Trump campaign started uh, hitting back by questioning donations to the Clinton Foundation, 
and how the money is spent. There have been questions in the media about that, and I'm not equating Trump University with the Clinton Foundation, but do you think those questions undermined uh, at all your argument against the Trump Foundation, not the a, Trump University? Not at all. I mean, really, this is like an absurd um, uh, comparison. Uh, we have disclosed everything. You can see what we do. We have we put out reports. You, we could find you millions of people who feel that their lives have been improved because of the work. Contrast that. The Attorney General of New York has said that Trump U is basically a fraud. It's a fraud where Donald Trump has preyed on people, has taken them uh, by asking them to max out their credit cards to a point of financial despair and walked away. So I will let the lawsuits go on. I think it's very clear, even from the testimony we've already heard about from his close associates, that even people working in it call it fraudulent. And, uh, you know, look, he has to answer to that. Madam Secretary, thanks so much. Good luck in California. I know thank it's you. A tough race you got. Well, we're doing we're doing well. We're going to go all the way to the finish line. All right. Thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you. It.